and welcome to another Vantech Tuesday. I hope you're all okay, doing all right. Weather's not so bad. It's that here. Wash the van, look at it. Oh, it's all gleaming. And um, yeah, thought I'd answer some more of your questions. Um, so we'll dive straight in there. The first question is, what are your thoughts on the airbags on your new van? And uh, honestly, I really can't tell the difference. Obviously, the last van I upgraded to the double wishbone suspension, and I thought it suddenly drove better, so the handling was better. Um, but you still felt the harsh bumps and everything in the road, and you still felt those with the airbags as well on this van. Um, the only thing that's really changed it was when we changed the wheels and tyres. I'll get onto that one in a minute. So, airbags on the van, I'd say. I personally can't say there's that much difference in ride um, quality, like the bangs and going over road bumps or you know bumps in the road or holes in the road or anything like that. Uh, the only thing I would say is that the van can be more easily levelled. Um, so where we had the problem last time where it was sagging at the back, you can adjust um, using the little air inflator things there. You can adjust them and that works out a treat so that's easy to do. Yeah, things in the back haven't moved around so much is what we're finding so maybe that's an indication that you know it's all right. I guess the problem that we got is that we didn't compare in the same vehicle airbags to normal suspension or anything so it's difficult is what I'm saying but I didn't experience the riding on a cushion of air like I thought I would I guess is the overall answer to that one. Uh, next question is, can you add different size solar panels to the same MPPT controller? Uh, yes, you can. If you've got an existing panel, like we had 100 watts, and then we added a 360, uh, just wire them in series so that your MPPT controller gets a bigger voltage sent to it. Obviously, make sure that the addition of the new panel and the old panel and all that kind of works out that your um, MPPT, control MPPT controller can handle the voltage. So the next question was about sink drainers, someone that's come from a caravan to a motorhome and they're just trying to work out now how they wash the dishes at the end of the night. Um, we've got a little sink drainer set and it's like a plastic tray that does what it's supposed to, clip over the side of your um, drainer bowl so everything you put on top in the rack then drains into it and out. But what we found is if you just kind of um, tip it up enough um, it's got quite a deep um, edge to it. So put your dishes on the on the rack that comes with it and the drain down and then um, you can just tip the water out later. I'll link down below to it and you'll see when you see the link what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, don't worry about it. It's not a problem. Uh, next question is, did you change from 15 inch to 16 inch wheels and tyres on your van? And then there's some more questions that go with that. So yes, we did change from 15, 15 inch to 16 inch. Uh, the next question was, has it affected your speedo? Yes, but in a positive way. The speedo was around about 15% uh, out beforehand when we had 15-inch um, rims on there, tyres. Put 16s on, and the speedo is now fairly accurate between a mile, mile an hour out. Uh, the third part of that question is, um, has it changed the road handling or the road noise or MPG? And um, Overall, no. It feels just the same as it did before and I wouldn't say there's any more road noise than there was. MPG seems to be the same um, and it handles just about the same as well so it's not really made any difference. Looks better, looks far better. And uh, Next question is, do you put any additives into your water tank to clean it or to make the water safer to drink? And the answer to that one is no, we go through water because we live in a van so we go through the tank of water, um, you know, so often can be a week or two weeks depends um, that it's it's flushed out then um, there's an inspection panel on the side of the water tank so when it's empty I always have a look in there there's never any problems with it or anything like that so we don't bother with anything like that next question is how big is your fresh water tank and how long does it last you um, so the first thing to say is obviously it's 120 litres and there are two of us and a dog that live in a van so I guess you need to work that into your own equation if it's just you working in the, living in a van or anything like that. And I would say, on average, if we both have a shower, you know, every few days, because it is van life after all, and we do everything else, bit of cooking, 
you know all the usual stuff that goes on I would say 120 litres can last us around about two weeks. Okay, next question is, have you ever weighed your van? And did you weigh your old van and compare the two? And the simple answer to that one is, no, we've never weighed the new van. Um, but the old van we did weigh, and there was about 295 kilogram payload. So once I'd actually gone there with everything lo loaded up, you know, fuel tanks filled up, water tanks filled up and that. Um, that was basically still massively underweight. Um, and this van, I guess what you've got to understand is that whilst it might be the Fiat cab at the front, the rest of it is very lightweight construction. Um, so this one's got a 550 kilogram payload. So um, I guess the van comes out just under three tonne and then the rest of it is for us to fill up. Uh, next question is, what make are your Fiat Jakarta window blinds? And they are Remis, excuse my pronunciation if they're not called that. Um, and I'll link to the video of when um, I installed them on the, rolled, on the old van. I'll link that on down there as well and you can see where you can buy them and um, how easy they are to fit. Uh, next question is, I'm buying a van from a dealer and he wants me to pay van tax. Um... Now I'm pretty sure on this one because the message did go on to say it was a van to convert. So I'm pretty sure the person was buying a base van and therefore it would be considered to be a commercial vehicle and you would be liable more than likely to pay VAT on that. I think that's what they like. You don't pay VAT, well it's a hidden charge, no one adds VAT on top of a motorhome or camper van. Um, it's just like buying a car. If someone's trying to do that, it's more than likely the van you're buying is a a van still and therefore it's classed as a taxable or VATable sale. Um, next question is I'm looking to buy a used motorhome like yours and will be mostly touring off grid. What solar and batteries do I need for this so I can get the dealer to fit them for me? Well if you are you know touring in it for a long period of time so you do want to make sure that you are going to be able to charge everything and run everything but then I guess still from that question, I don't know if you're going to have inverters, whether you're going to be running things off mains. Um, so I would just say, I know it might sound a bit crazy, but um, try and get as much solar as you can fit to the roof. 400 watts or thereabouts, four to 500 watts is great. Um, and try and get batteries, two batteries inside, identical batteries connected together. And hopefully go for, like say, as much as you can afford, but maybe get something region of um, between 250 and 300 combined amps out of that as well and that should do you um, next question is and this one if, um, it's a bit out there uh, what solar panel do I need to run an air conditioner <laughs> um, air conditioners are not meant to run off um, solar in a van because you need everything else to run off your batteries and things like that as well so let's just say uh, that the average air conditioner to cool a van down would be about 9,000 BTU. Uh, that is about 2.6 kilowatts. Um, and in 12 volt, as in what you're going to power it from, from your 12 volt batteries, that would require 217 amps. So if you want your air conditioning to run permanently when it's hot outside and sunny, you need to generate 217 amps of solar that is a lot of solar it's more solar than anybody could fit on the roof of the van even geeky phil hasn't got that much solar um yeah i understand that you know the good van well insulated the, the air conditioning isn't going to be running permanently that i do understand that but just to take the bare essentials out of the equation here you know you're going to need an awful lot of power to do that so i would say if your van doesn't have air conditioning in the cab and you're thinking of running air conditioning as you're driving down the road, give up on that one. Um, if you want to get to a campsite and plug into electrics, make sure they've got a decent uh, campsite electric hookup, like 10 amps, 13 amps, something like that, and then you might be in with a chance. Uh, next question is, what inverter do you use? And it's a Krager, and, and it's a 2 kilowatt inverter. Um, it's a modified sine wave, it's not a pure sine wave because for our needs it works fine. We've got um, things like um, coffee maker, uh, the instant pot, um, 
ice maker probably what you can hear at the moment as well and other bits and bobs and it all works fine with that but it also works all right actually if i plug my laptop in from time to time and charge that and other bits of electronics so it's still all right it's a good quality and it still seems to work okay uh, next question is how did you attach the awning wall supports to your van um, and that you kind of can't see right now but they're little wall supports where the awning legs clip into on the side of the van so your awning legs don't actually sit on the floor makes it a bit more secure and easier to put out in you know muddy grass or something like that and my van has aluminium walls so i riveted them to the walls because a rivet is aluminium and the brackets were plastic uh, it self seals so the, the actual rivet self seals afterwards um, so that was the easiest way to do it um, you could screw it in if your van is of the older type of construction where you've got um, wooden beams inside the van or something you could find out where those are and screw them into there um, but for me I found that it was easy just to rivet them and then they're done and dusted and next question is is it expensive to live in a motorhome well, it's expensive as as you want it to be or cheap as you want it to be I guess um, our base expenses so food a bit of fuel for traveling around you know the van insurance mobile phone costs LPG and the usual ongoing little costs we've estimated to be around the 650 to 700 pounds a month mark um, and then anything we do above that so if we go to France obviously got a ferry um, you know costing our channel crossing um, if we have to get boosters for Cooper that's above and beyond that you know, there's loads of things that you can add on top of that but it's entirely up to you you can do it as cheaply or as expensive as you want depends on what sort of motome about you buy as well how much it costs to run how much it costs to insure that kind of thing um i guess a good um example of this one darren urban moto has been living in his van i think about two three years now um, and he broke it down into a what it's actually cost him over you know a year or two so I'll link his video up there now and you can go and watch that one and then you give you a bit of an idea about a, a realistic kind of you know, budget to work to. Um, and the last one is, um, I've been getting an awful lot of questions via email about John, I would like to add this to my van or I've been quoted this much um, to add solar to my van and that kind of thing. Do you offer consultant work? Would you do it for me? And in the past, I've kind of shied away and said, no, I don't really want to get involved in that. But I've seen how much um, you guys are being ripped off, actually, by uh, companies that are, um, you know, charging. One example was somebody who said, um, I am adding a 150 watt solar panel and a 95 amp hour battery to my van. And the dealer wants £682. And that is, that's extortionate. So yeah, what I was going to say is I don't mind if you want to pay for my time. I don't mind being able to guide you through a process of what to buy, how to install it, all that kind of stuff. And also, you know, if we can do some little bits of jobs, I can come and help you. Maybe do it for you if it's a simple job or whatever. I don't mind that as well. So yeah, you can contact me via our website, www.gjot.uk. I'll put the links down the bottom anyway contact us via that uh, send me an email with whatever you've got in mind um, and then we can work out a price because i'd rather be able to help you and if so be it you know you feel that whatever i want to charge is suitable um, and you get something done at a more reasonable cost rather than paying a dealer who wants who thinks 100 pounds an hour is a decent amount of work for a fairly simple task because i don't um so there we go that's this week's questions over and done with if you've got any more please do leave them in the comments section down below and um yeah you take care and i'll catch you soon bye